Are you subscribed to PewDiePie? Yes, of course I'm subscribed to PewDiePie. What was your best slash favorite strongman event? So I'm gonna change was to is, since I'm obviously still competing, but uh, my favorite strongman events, it's hard to pick just one, but I would say the things that, uh, that I've done the best at historically would be really heavy stones. Um, so I currently hold the world record uh, for the heaviest set of Atlas stones ever loaded uh, up to uh, 495 pounds, um, 225 kilos. Uh, world record for the heaviest stone uh, ever loaded, um, which is 560 pounds. I've done much heavier um, than that in training, uh, lifting up stones. So that, that was a great event. That used to be at the Arnold Classic, but that's kind of long gone from that competition. Um, let's see, I've, I've excelled uh, when they had the heavy yoke at the Arnold. I, I won that event three out of the four years that they had it. That event is no longer at the Arnold, uh, but I really um, tend to excel at the really, really heavy events. Um, you know, kind of the, the heavier it goes, the better that I typically do. Um, so, you know, there, there's a, a number of different events. I, I really enjoy um, a lot of different events for a lot of different reasons. Um, heavy dumbbell was another event that I particularly enjoyed training and competing in. That also used to be at the Arnold and now is no longer there. Um, so, yes, I didn't realize how many of those events used to be at the Arnold and now are no longer there, but uh, I really like the heavier, harder events. Um, I guess that used to be at the Arnold. I used to like that a lot. So, um, of course, truck pulls and things like that, I really enjoy just due to the, the sheer mass of whatever we're pulling. So if it's an airplane or a, you know, a fire truck or, or some type of big bus or something, I've always liked that. Since I was a kid, I really enjoyed those events too. So it's hard to pick just one, but those are, um, you know, have been historically some of my best events and also my favorite events. What are some things you've always wanted to do but are not able to do due to your size? Wow, this is, uh, it's pretty crazy to think about, but um, I would say the thing that comes to my mind first is driving a supercar. Uh, so I've been around, you know, Lamborghinis and Ferraris and, um, and things like that, and it's literally impossible for me to even sit in them, let alone try to drive them. So I'm not gonna lie, that, that does kind of suck, because I feel like that would be a lot of fun to be able to do that, but you know, it's, it's, um, it's a lot of other things as well. So normal life, uh, you know, I have to sometimes ask for different chairs, because I can't fit in chairs. Uh, you know, I, I um, you know, as you guys have seen, it's very hard for me to fit into small airplane bathrooms or normal airplane seats are, are almost impossible. So there's a lot of things. I can't say that, that um, those would necessarily fit where uh, I've always wanted to do them, but they're, you know, almost impossible. I, I would say, you know, things like um, uh, going on kind of amusement park rides, that's a no-go. Um, I have wanted to do a zip line for some reason, but that would be like a death sentence uh, to strap me into a, a zip line because I think the weight limit is something like 225 pounds or maybe 250 pounds, which I exceed by a lot. So, um, so I won't be doing that. Skydiving, can't say that I would really love that, but uh, impossible as well. So. Those are a few. Um, so if I had a bucket list of crazy stuff I wanted to do, you know, those things would definitely not be on it due to my size. Will you ever work slash work out with other YouTubers that don't actually make videos about gym? I'm, I'm assuming you meant the gym, but to answer your question, yes, I would love to do that. I mean, there's, um, you know, potential collabs with, you know, guys that eat or um, really anything. I mean, I'm up, I'm up for a challenge. I'm up for something fun and something different that doesn't necessarily have to involve the gym. What do you think about Larry Wheels entering Strongman? There has been a lot of talk about Larry Wheels and uh, rightfully so. I mean, him, you know, getting into Strongman uh, has created a lot of hype. 
around the sport and um, you know there's been some people that have, have you know said both positive and negative things I personally think it's a positive thing I, I love when anybody wants to get into strongman and especially you know an accomplished power lifter like Larry wheels coming into the sport is only going to be a good thing you know I've met Larry seems like a, a really good guy He's, you know got a good head on his shoulders and um, he seems you know prepared to do the work to, that it's going to take to be successful and strong man you know and I think he's got um, a lot of pressure on himself you know just because of how accomplished he was as a power lifter there's a lot of things that are that are going to come along with that and there's a lot of people that are going to have you know big expectations from him right out of the gate and you know I've seen it before in the sport where there's been very strong guys that have tried to cross over uh, to strongman, but they weren't prepared to put in the amount of work that Larry is clearly putting in. So I think he will have success in strongman. You know, it's, it's kind of, you know, something where you need to give him a little bit of time, uh, you know, because these events, the strongman events, you know, especially some of the moving events that aren't just deadlifting and pressing, it's going to take him a little bit of time to catch up on, but um, you know I think he's got he's got potential, and that's what it takes. It, it takes potential and it takes heart and dedication and drive, and it seems like he has all of those factors going for him. So it'll be exciting, um, you know, to see where he can push it and where he can go within strongman. You know, I know um, there's been some comments. That, that have been said, uh, you know, about him, him, um, you know, going after a podium place at World's Strongest Man. And he's gotten some scrutiny from people by saying that. Now, I think personally, you have to have big goals and you, you have to be able to, to see yourself achieving something great if you want to achieve that. So personally, for me, I'm, I'm not worried about him saying he wants top three at World's Strongest Man. That shows me that he's got big goals and big ambitions and things that he's willing to push himself for. So, you know, people can say what they want and, and whatever, but you know, if years ago, you know, social media and YouTube and all that wasn't as big, but you know, I had a dream of winning World's Strongest Man and I wrote it down and I said I was gonna win World's Strongest Man and then I went and got it done. So, you know, I'm sure I would have got, well, I did even, even without social media and YouTube, the way it was, I got a lot of scrutiny from people, um, you know, about me being able to win World's Strongest Man and accomplish that. So, you know, somebody like Larry, you know, as long as he, he you know, doesn't listen to the naysayers and keeps that in his head, then I don't see why not. You know, I mean, it's gonna take a lot of hard work, but like I said, I think he's prepared to put that in. So it'll be exciting to see where he goes with the sport of Strongman. How horrible were the after effects from the Taco Bell challenge? Well, I will say that they were about as horrible as the actual Taco Bell challenge. You know, that, that was an awful idea. I was regretting that uh, probably a couple minutes into the challenge. I was already thinking this is a really bad idea. You know, my stomach started hurting. Um, I started sweating. So a lot of things started coming and, and, you know, my body was just freaking out because of what I was eating. And it was pretty awful. Um, the, you know, the toilet uh, took a beating, I'm not gonna lie. And, um, you know, it took me a little bit to recover from that. But, you know, it, it's funny after the fact during it, before I was very apprehensive and during the challenge it sucked, you know, afterwards it sucked, but um, you know, at the end of the day, uh, I like to have fun. I like to get a laugh out of things and you know, you guys had requested that I did a, a food eating challenge again and that's the one that got picked. Um, I think like I said in the video, it was the worst one that I've ever done um, and I, I won't be doing uh, any kind of Taco Bell challenge. Uh, I won't say ever, but definitely not in the near future. What would you like to pull for next year's Arnold? So talking about the Arnold, um, I've had a lot of questions obviously about the hamstring injury and the recovery and the deadlift at the Arnold. And um, 
you know, with any with any competition, when something doesn't go right, um, you know, and if there's an injury that happens, I really like to look back at, you know, the training progression, what what I did in training, um, you know, and if there was any reason or any way that I could have avoided uh, getting injured. And you know, the crazy thing, you know, thinking back for me that I'm stumped about is the first year they brought that that elephant bar which by the way is gorgeous. The plates are amazing. Uh, the bar has a lot of play in it. You know, it's, it's a very unique pole. But the first year they brought that um, to the Arnold, I tweaked my hamstring. I didn't have a full hamstring tear, but I definitely tweaked my hamstring where it, you know, it got sore um, and I pulled something. It was, you know, kind of a minor pull. And I didn't think much of it. Um, you know, in that year I pulled 1,021. Um, and it was a good pull. It was really fast, really solid. But that has happened now at the Arnold for me. Um, I think I had another hamstring tweak in, in 2017. Um, you know, and, and uh, then again, obviously, the, the, the tear um, this year, where that actually, I think that 17 was a little bit more of a tear. But the, the, the common denominator with all of these is the Arnold, the elephant bar, and that stage. And so I, I went back and, you know, obviously I tried to train on a longer bar that was a little bit less stable, had some play in it uh, to try to get ready for that bar. But in slowing the videos down, the bar travel path changes quite a bit, even from what I did in training and all the videos that I kind of shot from the side in training. And I, um, you know, the only factor that I can really see is that the stage at the Arnold is not completely stable. So that means that it shifts a little bit. And if you think about it, when you start pulling that amount of weight on a deadlift, so, you know, my last attempt at the Arnold where I got hurt was 1,051 pounds plus my own body weight. You know, we're talking roughly 1,500 pounds where my feet are set in one spot. And then once the bar comes off the ground, the weights start to shake in different ways and the bar flexes up and down. And, you know, if you think about it, the only thing I can come up with is that there's just a little bit of play in the stage that my body is not accustomed to. And obviously several other guys apparently are not accustomed to this because there was a lot of injuries this year um, on that deadlift, especially um, with some of the bigger weights. Guys got injured, but the bar starts to come alive a lot more at the heavier weights. So going back, you know, to the drawing board with that event, you know, um, I think that the, the X factors would be if there's a way to make the stage more stable to make the event safer, number one. And then number two, just thinking out loud, kind of brainstorming for myself would be, do I add in some type of possible unstable pulling surface to pull that deadlift from? Um, you know, I, I think those are, those are kind of the main things because, you know, for me, um, I've done a lot of deadlifts, a lot of different deadlifts event, events in my career, and I have not ever had an ongoing problem like the elephant bar with that stage presents to me personally. So I can only speak for myself. I don't know, you know, for the other guys that did get hurt on that, I, I haven't really talked to them about this uh, to see if they had any idea. But what I will say is, is anybody that's kind of walked on that stage, or maybe it's just the heavier guys, you can definitely feel the stage moving. And then when you're deadlifting, you know, there's people walking around, there's some play in the stage. And when you go to lift, that amount of weight, and especially with the deadlift where you need the bar path to be exact. I mean, if that bar gets out of line by half an inch, you know, even even up to like an inch or something, you're, the, the, the stress on your body changes dramatically. Um, and that's why I work so hard in training to have a bar path that I know and that I can feel. And, um, you know, for me, the video, you know, when I went back and watched the, of the 1051, the bar path changed pretty dramatically once the bar started leaving the floor. And that's when, at that moment, when my hamstring went. So 
Again, I, I can't say for sure, but, um, you know, I've gone back and, you know, as, as a lot of you know, I think a lot about the events and the training and how to prepare better and how to get th through things the best that I possibly can. And, um, you know, that hamstring injury at the Arnold cost me a lot and therefore I'm having to think about it a lot more. So that's my conclusion. Um, so as far as getting back to the actual question, what do I think I'll pull at the Arnold next year? I don't know. I really don't know, when I, and um, I'm not going to call a number right now, but what I am going to do is I am going to go back to the drawing board and figure out, you know, some of these factors, if there's ways that I can control them a little bit better with my training, um, and potentially if, if there's ways to discuss uh, with people involved, if there's a, a way to make that safer potentially, or to have the deadlift on a more solid surface would be my personal idea. but. I'm not sure if, if um, there's a way to do that or not. So a lot of things going on there, and, and I know that's probably uh, more than you wanted from that. You probably just wanted to hear a number, um, but that's what I thought about with the deadlift, and um, that's where I'm at with that event. Will you compete at the log lift championship? And if yes, what is the weight you see yourself uh, being able to do? So unfortunately, uh, I will not be able to compete there um, you know, it's with this hamstring injury coming off the Arnold, you know, I, I was trying to do my best uh, to do some seated pressing work and that type of thing to build up to the contest. But unfortunately, the hamstring has taken a little bit longer than I wanted it to in order to be able to press the best weight that I possibly could at that competition. You know, the, in the lead up to the Arnold, uh, my log pressing was one of the things I was the most excited about and what I was really hoping to go after um, at the, the log press championship was the American record, which would have been, um, I believe, beating 211 kilos. So 212 kilos, which is roughly 470 pounds, um, is what I was hoping to be able to do there. That was really my biggest goal. And uh, at this point in time, I can't push that, mainly due to my hamstring recovery process. So. I just don't want to give a subpar performance. You know, it's something where I wanted to come in there and really uh, challenge that record and break that record for sure. And right now, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just not going to be able to do that uh, the way that I wanted to. So unfortunately, no, I'm not going to compete. But I will be there 100% because I said I was going to be there. So I am coming. I will be at the contest. I will be doing a meet and greet with the fans. Um, and uh, interacting as much as I possibly can, you know, with the other guys and of course everybody that comes to the event. So I know there uh, might still be tickets available for that event. It's on April 6th uh, in Leeds and the event is called Europe's Strongest Man, but then the Log Press World Championship is part of that. So if any of you are in that area and want to check it out, it, it should be a heck of a contest. There's a lot of guys coming. Europe's Strongest Man is always a, a massive, massive contest. And I'm jealous that I typically can't, you know, uh, compete in a contest like that uh, that's as big as Europe's Strongest Man. So, like I said, if you want to go check it out, um, there are tickets still available. So, um, you can research that through Giants Live, who is the contest promoter. Um, and we may try to put a link uh, below the video as well. But um, it should be a good event and I will be there, unfortunately not competing. What is your best advice for gaining overall weight and muscle mass for beginners? So if you're a beginner, the, the biggest thing that you need to focus on when you're getting into the gym for the first time is building uh, that base by having correct technique. So the worst thing that you can possibly do when you walk into the gym for the first time is try to max out use terrible form and risk getting hurt. So lifting weight and um, getting stronger is very much a marathon and not a sprint. So the best thing that you can do um, as a beginner is, is learn how to do the movements correctly. And then um, my advice about gaining weight and muscle mass, you wanna put most of your attention on to the major multi-joint multi movements. So by that, I mean squat, deadlift, uh, and bench press or overhead press uh, are gonna be the best ways to get strong. So if you're looking to get strong, you know, going in and doing a, uh, you know, a preacher curl or something like that 
is not going to get you the same type of muscle mass development and overall body strength as squatting or deadlifting um, or pressing will do. So that's where you want to spend the most of your time as a beginner to build that base up. Um, and then, you know, really when, when you're talking about gaining weight, you need to make sure you're eating enough. So eating enough quality food and training hard um, and as smart as you possibly can, those two together are going to be what gives you the results you want. Mm-hmm.